What's going on guys? Today I wanna to talk about iMacs and laptops. And I know I don't talk about gear that much, but why I kinda of wanna talk about these things is you edit footage on them. You edit your projects, you create the art that you want to make. And right now we're in the midst of so many different films that we've been doing a lot of editing. We just finished The Art of Documentary, but we're also in the midst of a really cool film called Clear Sky that Michael, my creative partner, is directing right now. And I've been having the chance to DP just a little bit of it, hopefully getting to shoot some more, but we've been shooting some really cool stuff. And I've been kind of doing a lot of this editing just on my laptop. And I have it set up with a clamshell and a screen, but I realized it's time to upgrade. It's time to finally work with the big boy toys. And yet we have an iMac Pro in our office, but I don't have an iMac at my station. So we decided to solve this and get an iMac. So here we are. This is the iMac 2020. And as discussed, I'm gonna kind of talk about this, I don't know, tension that I'm in between. Do I own a laptop? Do I own an iMac? Which one do I use? And the first thing I wanna talk about with this iMac 2020 is the screen. And you probably heard a lot of people talking about this already. There's something called nano texture glass, and it is incredible. There is practically zero reflections. When I first heard about this from Apple, I was kind of skeptical about it because I've owned a lot of Mac laptops. And in the past, they used to have the option between glossy and matte, and the matte screens used to end up looking pretty bad after a while. So when people tell me about a matte finish on a screen, I'm a bit skeptical. But man, I've been so impressed with this, especially because in my space, we have a skylight. And so I have to work here all day, I'm waiting for our landlords to put in a blind over it. But often we have reflections in here and it hasn't been so bad when I've been on my LG monitor. But when I'm on my laptop and I'm sitting on the couch or I have it open on the desk, I'll get a lot of reflections and you gotta adjust it or you end up seeing your own reflection if your face is brighter than the screen. But you get none of this with the nano texture glass. It's incredible. The, the way Mati described it in his video was that it looked like a painting and it truly does. It's kind of trippy because it doesn't even feel like a screen. You kind of have to see it to believe it. Now, when I really get in close, it doesn't seem maybe as sharp as my LG, but I'm talking like maybe like 5% less sharp. It's not enough to bother you. It's actually really nice on the eyes. So for the past year, I've actually just been editing off a laptop in clamshell mode with a 5K 21 by nine LG monitor. And I've been really, really impressed with the latest line of Apple laptops. We have a 16 inch here at the office now, and both have been performing really well. And so I wasn't sure if, you know, having just a 16 by nine screen would bother me. And I thought it might because I've been so used to doing everything on the 21 by nine monitor, which has been fun. But ultimately I haven't missed that extra real estate that I had on the other monitor, I actually find it nicer just to be looking at this one screen rather than having to look around this entire 21 by nine monitor, which was so huge. The other nice thing about not being in clamshell mode is I think I might've been putting a lot of heat stress on my laptop having it closed that way. I, Apple doesn't have any warnings about this and I haven't experienced any overheating, but I wonder if I'm really stressing out the components, rendering that much footage, because I work in 4K mainly, with a laptop closed. Overall, the clamshell has done me well, but it's nice not to hear those fans going when I'm doing simple rendering tasks. And the second thing that's really interesting is the price. Now this came out to be a couple hundred dollars more than my laptop, but what you're getting from this is you're getting two more cores. Where my laptop is eight cores and this is 10 core. And what's also interesting is with my laptop, in order for it to be you know, as workable as a workstation like the iMac here, I had to buy a monitor and that was almost $2,000. And then I also had to buy a USB-C hub. And so that was another $500. So once you start adding all these things in, including speakers and all that, the iMac X ends up being really affordable in that space. You, you kind of have it all in one. Now talking about processing power, I have kind of did a head-to-head -head test with my laptop and the iMac where I got both to export out a 4K sequence with multiple layers of color and grain into 4K H.264. If you're wondering what that tapping is, that's the rain. It's like Morse code. Just a few more drops, we'll see. So anyways, as I was saying, I rendered out 4K multiple layers of effects into 4K H.264 at 50 megabits. And the iMac at 10 cores 
rendered it at around uh, 26 minutes, 30 seconds, and the laptop did about 36 minutes. So an extra 10 minutes, which considering how small and thin this is, it's quite impressive that it's keeping up with this. But I was really impressed with my laptop did, but that extra 10 minutes does save you a lot of time if you're rendering out a lot of files all the time, or like for us, since we're a documentary production company, we're rendering out movies, which is 90 minutes of rendering sometimes. And we have to do that multiple times to send new edits every day, every week. So we actually have an iMac Pro in the other room, but we've been using this a lot now for some of the main editing that we've been doing. So I've actually been falling in love with how much power this iMac has and part of me was thinking like, why do I even own a laptop anymore? Because I just come here and I work. And that was kind of the mindset I had until a few weeks ago, I tested positive for COVID. I ended up having to quarantine it right in the middle of a film shoot. I had to get a test for COVID in order to go work on this film set in Quebec. And because that happened, I had to direct the entire thing from home. It's a commercial, so I can't show you anything. I signed an NDA, non-disclosure agreement but I had to sit there 14 hours a day and I could not have done that with my iMac here at work because I couldn't actually leave my house. So thankfully, I had my trusted 15 inch laptop here and I was able to do the entire film from home direct, talk to the crew. It was really handy having that. And that's where, it, you know, I can't ever get rid of having a laptop and I've always needed the convenience. And with COVID, it felt like, mm, you know, maybe I don't need the laptop because I can just set it up at home. But you never know, you get yourself into strange situations where you gotta be traveling or in my case, quarantined. I could not have done that if I didn't have my laptop because I was editing and watching videos and looking at live streams. Oh, and just so everyone knows, I was quarantined for 14 days, never left the house. I'm COVID negative, COVID clear now. COVID clear. Still practicing social distancing and wearing a mask in public places, but just so you're like watching this video thinking, this guy's walking around with COVID? No, I'm, I'm COVID clear. Now when talking about the laptop versus the iMac, my biggest complaint is this. The laptop, the MacBook Pro here, has four USB-C ports, whereas the iMac 2020 only has two. And so I've still actually had to use my USB hub as part of this so I have more ports and I can get my optical audio out for my speakers and I have all the drive hard drives because right now I have a couple of raids down there for all the projects we're working on. But that was my biggest complaint and I, I think I know why Apple is doing that because they want you to have the iMac Pro which has more USB-C ports than the one we have over in our edit suite has I think four on the back. So it hasn't been the end of the world like I said for me. I still use my hub because I have all my memory card slots right off the front and for me I was kind of hoping a few more ports on the back but it's not the end of the world. But speaking of ports, on the back of the iMac, there is a slot for RAM. And mine right now only has 32 gigs of RAM, but I'm really thinking of beefing it up because for an extra like 200, 250 bucks, I can go onto Amazon and I can grab third-party RAM and throw this into it. And it can have 128 gigs of RAM, which kind of is crazy. I've never had a computer that powerful at my fingertips. So I'm excited to see what that's gonna be like because I definitely wanna go get some RAM and try it out. And then I'll do some re-render test but we're working on so many films right now like I was saying at the beginning we have three movies right now that we're editing and there's a couple other projects that are in development with some really big broadcasters that I can't wait to bring you guys along which actually I should say that too for this channel we're waiting to hear back for a few films one that we've been pitching to CBC here in Canada and if it goes through we will bring you guys a, like kind of a behind the scenes journey along that so we're really excited for that to hopefully happen. And if it doesn't, we'll also talk about that, what it's like to be rejected from some of the biggest broadcasters in your country and when you're always pitching films, which we are right now, I have about 10 pitches on the go. I should really just choose one, but you're just always waiting for funding. So that, that's a whole other video. And we talk about that in our Art of Documentary course. Oh, and I should mention this too. Uh, it, kind of the X factor of owning an iMac is it's like a battle station. It's a place that you go to work. One of the issues about laptops for me is it becomes like an iPhone. You get really distracted. Your laptop just becomes this mix of professional and personal work. So I get on my laptop in the morning and rather than just working on my films, I end up maybe doing some online shopping or checking my emails and then I just get down this distraction vortex and I'm next thing I know half an hour has gone by and I haven't done any work where what I like about the iMac is when I sit down at that desktop 
I'm staring at this big screen and it feels like a workstation. It doesn't feel like a PlayStation. Not talking about Sony, but I mean that my laptop often becomes a place of distraction for me rather than a place of work. Another quick thing I should mention is we almost use only Apple products in this. Well, actually we only use Apple products. We all have iPhones, iPads, laptops, iMacs. And so for us, just having that Mac ecosystem is so helpful because we're constantly airdropping stuff to each other. And when one person, once in a while, we'll have an editor on another computer who isn't with us on a PC and it just sucks. It just sucks having them in the ecosystem. So we are so about Mac and that's why I love having the iMac now on my desk. Just continues the simplicity of our workflow. So in conclusion, laptop or iMac? Well, uh, both. I, I mean, if you can't afford it. If you can't, then you gotta ask yourself, is convenience of being able to travel with a laptop more important than having the power and the price point of an iMac. So for me in this case, I kind of need both. Our, our, our clients are picking up and our films are picking up and no longer can I do everything on my laptop. And I've been loving the fact that I can still have a beefy desktop setup in that price point of the iMac 2020. Don't have to go up to the iMac Pro. We already have one iMac Pro and buying two of them can become mm, a little less affordable. So I'm really loving the iMac. So you gotta weigh that out. Am I gonna be traveling a lot or am I gonna be at home for a while? Which unfortunately with this global pandemic, it feels like most of us are kind of tethered to our couches, our offices at home. So an iMac might be the way to go. But I'll let you decide that everyone has a different path. Everyone has a different career. There's not one right answer. As you can tell, I've been doing the clamshell mode, which not a lot of people People do but it worked for me but that might not work for you leave any comments below if you guys have any questions about these I've been using the iMac 2020 now for about two months so I have a lot more experience with it than I did at the beginning and I'm really really enjoying it I don't know how I can live without it now thanks guys for watching and I'll see you on the next one